level streaming is going to be one of the most important things for you to understand if you want to make a game beyond the scale of just what we've made so far. I've got a sample project here real quick to show off what level streaming can do for you and then we'll get into the multiple ways that you can do it for yourself. So we have a level here with a streaming level inside of it, which is all nice and good. But when we start the game itself, you can see the staircase is nowhere to be seen until we move forward into that streaming volume, that box that you've seen before, at which point the level itself appears and we can do whatever we want in it. And the moment we exit that box again, the level disappears. That's the most basic setup of level streaming. We can also manually, in other ways, load and unload levels when we want to. We'll cover that a little bit towards the end of the video. So let's talk a little bit about our level streaming here. So we have this entire level setup that we have created before, and you'll be able to see on the left-hand side here, I have a tab called Levels. If you personally don't have that, you can come up here to a window and enable Levels. And that's where we can see everything we've been doing so far has been in the persistent level, meaning the level that all of the other levels, all the sub-levels, exist within. If you want to make a new level here, you can simply just click here and create new. And that gives you the option of creating a basic level, but usually when you do it through this menu, you want to create an empty level because you're just going to be making everything in this level on top of your persistence level. And let's call this um, platforming one. And in that we can put everything that we can despawn the moment we leave this general area. So that would be something like this box brush and these cubes, potentially even like these lights we can add into that as well because all of this is only going to be relevant if we're actually inside of this area over here so with all of those elements selected we can now right click on our streaming level here platforming one and we can move selected actors to level so when we do that we see we have selected something that we are using in the level blueprint and that will break it at least a little bit sometimes so we really don't want to bother with that so we're going to not import that and the same thing with this one i suppose but everything else has now been put into this streaming level so if we uh, toggle the visibility we can see all those items disappear because they're inside of this streaming level now for level streaming volume setups so as we've seen at the beginning of this video you want to right click this and you want to Go to change streaming method from blueprint to be always loaded instead. You can manually say when to load and unload levels based on the name through blueprint, which again, we'll talk about a little bit later in this video. But for now, we're going to go back to placing actors and we'll look for a level streaming volume. We simply place that here and we make this as big as we need to be in the details here through the brush settings. So let's see, um, we want to make this nice and big. And so long as we are inside of this, these level elements will exist. So that seems about right. You can make these relatively large. So by the time we get all the way over here, it will start despawning them. Actually, as a matter of fact, let's make this thing even a little bit longer and a little bit wider. and add a little bit more uh, of a level in this direction here. What we want to do is maybe we want to make a new level and uh, that's going to be an empty level again. And that one we will call platforming two. And in platforming two, let's put in a staircase or something like that. And let's put in a few cylinders here as well, just to have a little bit of platforming. We can just make one of those in modeling mode and then copy it over a few times to have something we can jump back and forth across. We are going to add in, again, another level streaming volume, which you want to have those in the persistent level. Let me check to be sure if I select this, you can see this selected actor is in platforming one. It's not supposed to be, it's supposed to be in persistent level. Let's make sure that we're in the persistent level and drag in the level trimming volume, and then we can make it however big we need it to be here as well, which can be, again, pretty big if we want it to be, and then also pretty high. 
And we probably want this to spawn in before we exit that tunnel over there. So that it's nice and seamless and we don't see anything spawning in. I'll show you in a second that it does actually actively spawn in. Uh, but uh, that's way too big. <laughs> This is a situation where you probably want to actually go into uh, top view mode, so you can actually see what in the world we're doing, and that seems about right. So now, how do we set up these level streaming volumes in relation to the levels that they are supposed to be streaming? Well, let's real quick go back into perspective mode here, and if we go into the levels, we can... Uh, Select one of our streaming levels here. And with a streaming level selected, you want to come over here to the level details. If you don't have this tab yet, which is possible, you can simply press this button up here and that will summon the level details. And in the level details, we'll be able to see that we have a streaming volumes array over here, which means that we can add as many streaming volumes as we want. And this pretty much just means that as long as your character is inside of one of the streaming volumes in this array, this streaming level will be loaded. That's entirely already like programmed for you. You don't need to do anything else about it. So we can simply use the picking tool here and we can just simply pick this streaming level for level one and then platforming level two, we can add an element to that as well. And we can use the picking tool to pick the other streaming level, which is right over here. And also set this one actually to streaming method always loaded. You might think, I don't want it always loaded, that's the entire thing about streaming levels, but always loaded means always loaded as long as the streaming volumes allows for it. Unless it doesn't have a streaming volume, in which case it will indeed always be loaded. So if we just play in the selected viewport now, we can see this all works just as we expect, and we have the cutscene that we've created a few videos ago now. But if I press F8 and decouple myself from my player character, you'll be able to see that everything we made over here in that separate streaming level does, in fact, not actually exist yet. Now that we're back here again, let's actually play through the game here, and you can see now everything has been loaded in over there as well. So that's the basic idea behind streaming of volumes, but we can take it a little bit further than that. Now, instead of this level streaming uh, mumbo jumbo with volumes, let's say we have a streaming level, which we can just add here. We can simply create a new streaming level again, make it an empty level, and uh, we can call that platforming three, very badly spelled. And for this one, let's say that we want to trigger it through Blueprint. So by default, that is the behavior it has, so it will always be unloaded unless we actively load it in through Blueprint. And how can we do that? Well, first, let's actually put some things into this level, and we can do that very easily. Just a couple of decorations here, like a box and a cone and a torus all will be added in here as part of platforming level three. Can be just that easy, just a little bit of decoration. And add uh, two trigger boxes, one to load the level and one to unload the level. I think that sounds about right. So we put a trigger box on this side to load the level. And it's very important here to keep in mind that we've been working in platforming level three. So we want to switch back to persistent level. I constantly make this mistake. That's why I'm reiterating it. And time and time again, keeping it in the video here. Uh, because it is something that can cause some issues, which can be really confusing. Okay, that's one trigger box, and then we'll also put uh, a second trigger box on this side. And then we can open up the level blueprint, which we already have open. And for this one, we'll add in a on begin overlap. And we'll do the same thing for the other one, add begin overlap. You will first check if we are overlapping uh, with the cast to BP third person character, just to make sure that it's actually the player character that's overlapping and not something else like the uh, level geometry or something weird like that. And then we can load streaming level. As simple as that, by name or by object reference. I'm going to go with object reference for right now because that's easiest. That will literally just give you a drop down menu of all the different levels in your game. And for this right now, we want to load in our platforming level three. The wonderful thing about doing this is that it loads it asynchronously, which means that the moment this gets triggered, it will start loading while not stalling the actual game. It's going in a little bit in depth here. I'll give you a brief overview of it. Maybe at some point in the future, we'll go a little bit more in depth into it. But everything you do in your programming 
happens one thing after another. That's how computers work. They do one thing and then the next and then the next and then the next. But if you're loading in a huge chunk of your level, you don't want it to start loading all of those things in before it can move on with the next thing. Because the next thing also includes registering your player inputs, rendering the next frame of your game. And if this takes like 10 seconds to load in the next batch of a level, you don't want the game to freeze for 10 seconds while it does that. So that's why loading things asynchronously, meaning that it's done separately from the main game thread, as it's called, is very much a good thing. And now that you know this, I'm going to ruin any AAA game for you. Next time you're playing the game, pay attention when you're walking through a hallway. Because while you are walking through that hallway, in the background, the next part of the level is being loaded. That's 9 times out of 10 what hallways are used for in a level design. We want to make it visible after it's done loading, otherwise it will only load in the assets into memory and not actually show them in the world. And then when we enter the other trigger box, we want to unload our streaming level. And this one we can do by name if we wanted to. And unloading also is done asynchronously. You can see that through this little clock icon. Nodes with that icon are async nodes. They work asynchronously. So instead of using a object reference like we did here we can also in both cases use a level name in some cases that's preferable for now i'll just do both to show you that it works so let's copy this name over here and paste it in there and now when we enter one trigger box it's going to load in those assets and when we enter the other trigger box it's going to unload those assets so let's hope i remembered the uh the site correctly here so now when we walk into this it loads in those assets and at that site it will unload the assets and that is how you can manually trigger loading and unloading your streaming levels and just as a fun little aside i'm going to take you into my own game projects and show you a implementation of that and all of the cool stuff that you can do with that do be warned the node setup there is very very messy so here are my own project where I just put the camera speed up a little bit higher because it was moving around very slowly. All of these boxes you see here, like this one and this one and this one and this one and well, you get the point, are separate levels and they're st separate streaming levels as well. So if I go over to the levels here and I say uh, I want to uh, have 04 hallway, as I call it, that's this one. If I make that invisible you can see everything about that entire box disappears and if we go inside it there's like a little bit of art decoration and there's lighting and there's some navigation meshes and there's enemies and all that good stuff and i probably want to put the camera speed back down now that i'm up closer again and that all disappears when i hide this entire streaming level everything here is contained in that streaming level and while we're playing the game and i'll just run the game real quick here uh, i will mute my audio though when we first start up the game, you can see it unloads all the streaming levels because none of them are by default loaded. Everything is loaded through blueprints. And only the main menu, which is a couple of objects that like spawn in this UI stuff, which UI will get to next time. Literally, the next video I have planned is to do with uh, building a basic UI. Uh, we can load a game. We'll also talk about save games at some point. And then it spawns in the streaming level, which you can see right here on this side. This is the level that we're in right now, that one is loaded, and that's because that was the level I was in when I saved my game. So if you take a close look at what happens over at this little side menu here, while I walk around, if I walk through that door at the end of this hallway, it will unload my current level and load the corresponding level instead. So we have the combat tutorial level here. And if I go through that door again, it spawns back in the spawner tutorial, and so on and so forth. So if I go through this level here real quick, which is supposed to show you how enemy spawners work in my game and all that stuff, and I go through here, we end up in the hallway, which we were just in, which is a split hallway between going left and going right to two different objectives. So that is how all that works works i'm not going to be able to show you the entire system here because it's uh a little complex for this scale here but i'll just give you a brief overview uh somewhere in here all that stuff happens <laughs> as well as some uh c plus plus code so what it does is when i collide with this uh, box here that's on this door actor 
it will use the level to load variable that I have on it to load that streaming level in by name. So that's one of those situations where I use it to load in by name because what it also does, and this is kind of neat, is it looks at what your current streaming level is, the current active one, it saves that to some location, and then when this level gets loaded, it checks all of the existing doors in here and checks the level to load on this door, which is the room we just came from, and it puts the player in the right position to go forward. So if I move this door in any way, shape or form or whatever, it always will spawn me right at this arrow. This is an entire level loading system that took me quite a while to um, to build, <laughs> and I'm not going to be able to show it off properly within this video. Maybe at some point I will do a more in-depth video on it. It also includes actual loading screens, which stay up as long as the async loading is happening, which you can see. It's pretty quick, right? Because they're relatively simple levels. But this, in a nutshell, is how level streaming works in Unreal. So even if you have a game which at first glance might not look like you need level streaming because you have small self-contained levels like I have in my game. I mean, this level is laughably small for a level in a modern game. You can still make use of level streaming for a variety of reasons. Because if you don't use level streaming and you open new persistent levels every time, there's a number of downsides to that. A lot of data won't be persistent. So things like your player's HP will reset every time and you have to manually readjust it and save it to somewhere before loading a new level. The music will stop and restart every time you load into a new level. All those kind of things, huge downsides to opening new persistent levels every single time. That's the reason I personally went with a system where things load in and out of existence. And you should too. And after watching this video, you now exactly know more or less, how to do that. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my Cave Digger tier Patreons, Sergey Thomas and Eleanor.